Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. Thanksgiving week is upon us. Food, festivities, <laughs> but most importantly, thankfulness. We at TV44 are thankful to God for you. We're praying for you on this Thanksgiving week. We're also thankful for Matt Finkel, who has joined here. us today. Yay. Andy Lynch, Zach Bowers, both away this week. Matt, who he's usually here. He's always here, actually. He's <laughs> behind the scenes doing some other stuff. But this week, he gets to move on up to the uh, red chair. You know, Jenna, I finally friends. feel like a friend. The name of the show is Faith and Friends, and Jennifer always, she even puts me on the Twitter graphic at the end of each show, but now I'm officially a friend because I've got my own red chair. That's the thing. If you, would you like to be a Faith and Friend friend? Well, maybe we need to hear from you. Maybe we'll have a guest red chair spot, but yeah, you know, months ago we put Zach Bowers in the red chair for the first time, and look what's happened ever since. He's really ascended up the ranks here. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Zach. Matt's coming for you. This is how it starts. I'm Wally pipping him. <laughs> Well, Thanksgiving is upon us this week, and we are hoping that you are up for some exciting stuff. A 24 pound turkey at my house is going to be um, carved up, and soon there will be a half pound carcass. There probably will be, yeah. yeah. You're going to put your daughters to work on that as well? I, yeah, I think they can just do the whole dinner. You know, I, that'll work out just okay. Just have to manage, that's all. Well, Andy started his cooking his Thanksgiving turkey a couple weeks ago, so his is probably over Yeah, by it's now. not going to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we will tell you more about fun seasonal things coming up because we've got a food segment today, but also some more opportunities about giving, giving to Operation Christmas Child. That was all last week. I'll tell you about that in a moment, but first, let's take a look at our scripture of the day. Mark? It comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 9. We're talking today about giving. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Well, last week was a great example of giving from the community. Hundreds of you brought your filled shoe boxes to our TV station as part of our annual Worldwide Operation Christmas Child Shoe Box Collection for Samaritan's Purse. For weeks you have seen here on TV44 how the box that Jennifer put together, and that box is among the thousands that are making their way to their next stop in Boone, North Carolina. And Jennifer talks with the local collection coordinator who explains why a shoebox can make such a big difference. Well, as Zach promised you last week, my box truly did get delivered to the uh, Operation Christmas Child shoebox. And of course, I wanted you to be a witness of it because it's not just me. I'm just one tiny piece in the huge pool doing incredible things to reach kids all over the world. Possibly you were a part of this as well as last week was the big box collection week. And here we are, Box Central. Don't see a whole lot of boxes here today, but that's because every day throughout the collection week, these incredible volunteers came in and packaged them up and counted everything and got everything ready to travel on to its next don next destination, which we're going to find out where that was in a moment. But first, I have to actually officially do my thing here. I've got to submit this. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Here's my box. I didn't package it very well. I hope you'll still take it. Yes, we have rubber bands. We're well, well versed in how to do this. We will insert your check for shipping and handling in this box and then I'll take care of it in Boone, North Carolina. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Do I get one of these stickers too? You can have stickers there. Have stickers I feel there. like I've been voting. Look at that. All year long we can be talking about all these incredible shoe boxes. Take a look at the reality of what's going to be going around the world from this point onward. Girls, boys, all different ages. But the neatest thing about all of this is wrapped up inside of every one of these boxes is prayer. Prayer and the gospel message of Jesus Christ that's going to reach across the region. Hey, Michael's over here working very hard. Why don't you tell me what you've been doing all week long here? Looks like you've got, you've got the heavy labor job. Oh, yeah. Um, well, after the boxes come in, uh, these ladies and I help sometimes uh, pack them inside these Coltons, tape them up and label them, and then I take them out to the semi truck out there so they can deliver it to the main center to where they go through the boxes and until they get shipped out. 
Get them on to the next place. Lots and lots of important jobs that take place. Just like in any ministry, it takes many different individuals each to do their part in order to send things on the way they need to go. We're going to find Deb Smith, who is the coordinator here for the box distribution here in our Lima drop-off location. Always an exciting week, Deb. The boxes are being packaged up, just like your son told us, sent out to the semi-truck. And then where do they go from that point onward? They go down to um, Boone, North Carolina, and then it's a processing center. And then from the processing center, they will open up these cartons. They will go through the boxes to take out the donations. And if there are any items that aren't appropriate, they will take those out, put them to the side. They do get used. They just, to the proper countries, sometimes they'll do them here in the States, like to the Indian reservations. They do. And then, then they will repack the cartons, and they'll ship them overseas. And then that journey is really neat. They can be put on flat boats, go across rivers, then they'll get on donkeys, and they'll go up to mountains and to villages, remote villages. Some of the things that they do, it's just awesome. That is incredible. How does it feel as you pack these boxes, recognizing that that's, that's going to happen? A donkey or a flat boat is going to take the message of Jesus Christ into some of the most remote regions. The love. I just can't explain it, Jennifer. Just think that Jesus loves us so much, and all of us, just not here in the United States, but everywhere. God loves us. Jesus loves us. It's just awesome thinking that somebody that we packed here is going to, re and that, like you said, in the remote village, could receive one of our boxes. And these, the only thing is also, is sometimes these gifts, or most of the time rather, is the only Christmas gift these kids will receive in their entire life. <laughs> and it's just, oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Here sometimes. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. It is wonderful. It's exciting. Maybe you saw our interview with Arena Creek earlier this year on Faith and Friends. Maybe last year you saw some of our other interviews with some of the children whose lives truly have been changed because of a shoebox, because of the gospel message. You never know what God is going to use to impact people's hearts and lives so that they come to know Him and their lives change forever. Well, tis the season for giving, and we are thankful at the way you have been giving to the TV44 annual pledge drive. We're still moving toward our goal of $200,000. Currently, just under 20% of our goal. I'd like to take some time now to thank some folks who have already partnered with us, including Mrs. Lois Haberkamp from New Knoxville, Mrs. Shirley Moore from McKenton, and Mrs. Carol Offenbacher from Lakeview. Thank you for your gifts and a few special things to remember. Giving Tuesday is coming up December the 2nd. Now, this is a nationwide event encouraging people to donate to one of their favorite causes. We are praying for at least 20 new donors on that day. You can learn more about it at WTLW.com. Also, don't forget your end of the year gifts count toward your 2014 tax return. Just make sure your gift is postmarked by December 31st, 2014. Matt? Oh, it is common to hear about giving this time of year, and it's also common to hear about trips to the doctor's office, unfortunately. Sickness can be as common as Christmas carols in the December months. Dr. Trudy Pieper says there are some simple and effective remedies that could cause some major pain and infection relief for you and your children. Dancy has more. Well, Dr. Trudy Pieper is back with us, and we're going to be talking about earaches. Unfortunately, this is the season, it seems, for earaches, whether it's from allergies or the weather. And um, earaches not only affect our youngsters, but they affect us as we go into adulthood. So, Dr. Pieper, I'm glad that you can be with us again because um, this is a problem that families see, and there are some other solutions other than antibiotics, right? Absolutely. Almost always, if you take your child or if you go to the doctor for an earache, they're going to give you antibiotics. Automatically, it seems. And um, studies have shown that the, the antibiotics really, they don't help the problem a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, there are some natural remedies that show much more progress in healing than the antibiotics. And they're easy to do. They're most of the time, they're things that you have around your home. And children have a tendency to have more problems because as they're growing, the tubes in their ears or the passages are so small that any amount of mucus, they've got a little cold, a little congestion, it backs up in their ears and causes pressure and pain. So we, especially for our little ones, we should learn how to help them feel better. Well, let me ask you that then, um, because I have known a lot of children who have had the tubes. Do you recommend that as a method of, of correcting the problem? Actually, we have an herb. It's called eyebright. And eyebright is the, the tube for the ear for the herbal community. Okay. Just by using eyebright, it has the same function as an ear tube. 
the eyebright goes in and it, it decreases the swelling in the eustachian tube. It also helps to maintain it so it does not get inflamed. So I have found in my practice over the years, the last 30 years, that if I can have um, my clients or my patients to be on eyebright, then that will, they will not need the tubes in their ears. Oh, that is wonderful. I, I would hope that many parents out there are listening to this because I'm sure that is not fun to have to take a child in so young for surgery. And with eyebright, you can get it as a tincture. So even if they're little, a tincture is a, in a dropper. It's a liquid form. Okay. And that's the best way because it, it's absorbed more quickly than even a capsule form. So you can get in capsules and you can open the capsules and put them in applesauce or yogurt or something for your child. But actually just go to the health food store, buy it in a tincture or a liquid form, put it in little dropper folds in their mouth and it'll go, it's absorbed immediately into their system. Wow. And it's great for kids and keeping those ears open. Okay, but as we said, children aren't the only ones who suffer right. um, with the ear aches. So what do you suggest that adults do? There are several different things, and first of all, you might want to look at what's causing the ear. Is it because you have a, a cold or a flu and mm -hmm. you have congestion that's backing up, or is this something consistently that's happening? If that's the case, it could be an allergy. You might want to check and see. Usually the two culprits are dairy, cow's milk, and wheat. Mm -hmm. And by eliminating those from your diet, you can check to see if your earaches stop at that point. Then you'll know it's allergy-related. If it's not and you just have a tendency to have that, maybe your ear passage is a little smaller than, than the normal yeah. and, and mucus uh, will build up in there. There's several things you can do. Uh, the first one is garlic oil. Okay. And it's probably the first thing I go to unless there's severe pain and if there's severe pain we do onion. But we'll start with garlic oil and it's a natural antibiotic uh, so that if there is any kind of bacteria or fungal growth in there, it will kill it. It's made very easily. You can make it ahead of time and, and store it for when you need it, or you can buy it at the health food store, already pre-made. And the key is just to warm it up to room to body temperature mm -hmm. and drop it in the ear and do that regularly, two or three times a day over a three or four day period, and you'll pretty much clear up the ear. It's easy to make. You just take one clove of garlic and you chop it up. You take some extra virgin olive oil, you pour over the top of it, just a little bit over the top of like a fourth of an inch, and then you're gonna heat that over low, slow heat uh, for about 15 minutes. Then you're gonna drain out the garlic from that. Add a little vitamin E, take a, a capsule of vitamin E, open that up and squirt it in there, shake it all up and store it in a cool dark place and you're ready to go for earaches. Okay, is this something, you know, if you don't wanna go through, you know, the steps that you mentioned, can you purchase it, just Absol plain garlic oil? Absolutely, it's in every uh, health food store and it comes again with a little bottle with a dropper and you put the little drops in each ear and repeat that and you will solve the problem of the inflammation and any infection that may be in there. Yeah, because I, I you know, I, I would think that many ear infections are also caused by um, a bacteria of right. some sort. So yes, you would want to make sure that is killed. <laughs> right, so it kills the bacteria, also does the inflammation, and that's okay. where the pain and pressure comes in because it swells up. So you want to make sure the inflammation goes down and the, uh, the garlic does that. It's a wonderful. Wow, and then onion juice. <laughs> So your ears smell real good then after you haven't had garlic and onion juice. <laughs> you are, people are gonna stay away, that is for sure. And that's okay, maybe you need that so you're not gonna get any more germs. There you go, there you go. <laughs> well, onions are something people have and it's, it's simple. You take a slice of an onion and you slice it and either steam it or bake it and sprinkle a little water on top of it. And then you collect the juice off of that. Once it's cooked, it, the, the natural juices come out of the onion. You put that in a little container and then you'll take a little dropper, you take some of that and put it in the ear. And for severe pain, if someone is in pain, this will almost immediately take the pain away. Really? Just from That's the garlic. That's worth it right there. Right from the onion juice will Im immediately relieve the pain. So it, it, if they're having pain, get the onion out. Okay. And then again, is that something that can be purchased or do you need to make that yourself? You know, I, I rarely see that in the okay. health food stores. Um, it's something so huh. simple to do. I don't know why someone hasn't made that. Maybe there is. Yeah. Um, you know, keep your eye out for it. Yeah. And I'm sure it's something online you can find. But yeah. if you don't have the time, it takes very little time to do it. So. 
It's funny, I just had an image, you know, you were talking about the garlic and onions, and I'm thinking, you know, my husband would walk in the door thinking I'd cooked a spaghetti <laughs> dinner for him, and no, honey, it's just something for your ears. So, <laughs> that is. It, it goes back to show that God gave us all the it's tools true. that we need in the foods yes. that we have around us. So, yes. uh, taking advantage of those is cost effective, it's fun, and it's something that you can even teach your children how to do. Absolutely. Well, and again, there are other um, solutions as well, essential oils. Oils. Um. It, every, uh, essential oils are very popular today, and I like them a lot. And again, it's something that you can use, and it will take the inflammation down in mm -hmm. the ear and will heal the ear. And there's a uh, use lavender, uh, thyme, or tea tree oil are the three best. The key is you have to um, mix it with the olive oil. You can't put that directly into your, it's oh. too strong and too powerful. Good to know. So you're going to have one drop of the essential oil to 10 drops of the oil. Okay. And then you're going to use that as the as the carrier for your ear. Okay. And echinacea as well. We've heard of that for many years. Now. Everybody knows echinacea. It's the first line of defense for any illness. Um, it will definitely go in, particularly for bacterial infections. It, w it what it causes the white blood cells to increase in your body. Okay. And we know the white blood cells are the ones that uh, go after the invaders the viruses, the bacterials, the uh, microbes that come into our bodies. So it's always a good idea if you're feeling sick to go ahead and take echinacea. Okay, very good. Well, again, we need to remember the garlic and the uh, or garlic oil and onion juice. Those are the two that you would probably say work the best. They right? do, and then keep uh, eye bright in mind. Eye bright, that's for true. For continual, constant earaches, particularly in children, it is the the tube that we use. Yes. Only it's an herb. Very good. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right. Back to you. Thanks, Dancy. Well, with the big OSU Michigan game this weekend, we wanted to focus this week's Lost Creek Rehabil Rehabilitation and Care Center food segment on something that is both popular at Christmas time and also fitting for this football week. Well, today we are making Buckeyes. The only catch is that none of us have ever done this. And without Zach here to guide us along, who knows how things are going to go. Mark and Matt are here with me. And Matt, who I understand before this segment, had never experienced a Buckeye before. Googled what is a Buckeye. Found out that it involves peanut butter and chocolate, which I really enjoy both of. So this, I think, is going to go well. And really, we're doing this segment in honor of Mark, who is like our ultimate <laughs> Buckeye here. You brought a Buckeye, is that yeah, right? Yeah, well, well, I've got one in the office usually, so. But apparently we don't use this in the recipe at all, so I shouldn't dump it into the butter. Uh, according to this recipe, it is not wise. I'm okay. not really In fact, Buckeyes are somewhat poisonous, so we really don't want to put that mm. in food. All right. Well, that'd well, be the end of the food segments <laughs> forever. Be, <laughs> that would be it. That's not really how we want, <laughs> want to change things. Okay, so we are going to, in the next few minutes, attempt to create Buckeyes. Now, many of you at home are probably laughing at us right now, going, you've never created, you've never made Buckeyes? It's so easy. Well, we will... Just ball up peanut butter and dip it in chocolate, right? Well, what do you think at home, folks? <laughs> What's your vote? <laughs> Call, text, or tweet us and let us know if that's correct. I heard it's a little bit more complicated than that, especially with this melted butter, which I would love to just get some pancakes right now and drizzle just the butter on it. It's perfect, that mm. melted butter. Well, we need that melted butter for an important reason. Mark and Matt are going to be our mixers, and we're going to start out with peanut butter, which, yes, you need peanut butter. Now, the recipe that we're going to show you on the screen that's is for so a, full, a full serving uh, 30 Buckeyes, but we have cut it in half just for the sake of television here. So we just put in three quarters a cup of peanut butter. If you're going to do a full thing, you're going to do one and a half cups at home. Next, we need that butter. The butter, it's very basic. Butter, vanilla extract. You're going to need a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract for what you're doing. For those of you at home, it's a half teaspoon. Remember, we're doing cutting it in half here. And then the uh, powdered sugar. All of that powdered sugar. All of that powdered sugar. Powdered sugar flies all over. Mix it up. Like oh, yeah, don't brown. forget the yeah. don't forget the vanilla. All right, this is where uh, we we we, need to we forgot to bring our measuring spoons, so we're trusting yeah. that that looks pretty good. We also suggest that maybe you use like a larger spoon. Um, I told you we we don't have Zach, our food expert here today, so we are just we're just. We're just trying winging things it. out. That's <laughs> right. We're just We're winging, winging it. it. Now, the recipe says that the uh, the dough is going to look dry. It does look dry. It Absolutely. does look dry. But it looks pretty white. I still think that 
we might have some more mixing that needs to be done. Now, as soon as Mark is done mixing that, he and Matt are now going to, are next going to start rolling those into little bowls. We don't have a melon baller for that. No melon baller. It uses oh, your hands. For this one. Here, uh, Matt rolls up the sleeves, and you'll need there the toothpicks go. because you're going to put a toothpick on the top of each one, which is very important for the final step. We're going to take. Well, take a look at that. That is just. The color job, is Mark. beautiful, Mark. I think Science. you have a. I think you have a future in Buckeye making. Okay, so then we just take a little bit and roll it up. All right. Go for it. So your thoughts so far? Is this a difficult recipe? No. Is this an easy recipe? No, we didn't have to melt the butter. I'm not sure how how well we'd be able to melt butter. <laughs> yeah, we chose to melt the butter. It does say in the recipe that you can just use softened butter if you want. Um, so as we roll those, we have been uh, melting some chocolate. We've yeah, got melted <laughs> chocolate here, which is going to be the next step coming up, using a double boiler, which makes it much easier to melt chocolate. Now, guys, don't forget to put the toothpicks on top. Oh, that's right. You distracted us, and we messed up already. Also remember that Buckeyes are round. Yeah, I, I just said mine's square. I don't, I don't know why I went for a square one. but That's an offensive lineman Buckeye right there. <laughs> that's a big one. Having trouble getting mine to stick. Are you having that issue? Not really. Mm -hmm. um, just using the old uh, roll it between two You know, I, I, are you doing the New Jersey Buckeye? I, I think Is so, that yeah. the issue here? I think they know I'm not from Ohio. <laughs> just like making snowballs out of yeah. dough. Well, I grew up in Iowa, better. so I also had never heard of Buckeyes until I moved here. And um, now that I've lived here, I can't believe that there are people who've never heard of Buckeyes. Well, okay, how are you guys doing? Great, I think. We got plenty you simply of continue this process until you are finished with all of your dough, and then you need to place the Buckeyes into the freezer for at least 30 minutes. You want them to get firm because then you have the next step, which involves dipping them now, in chocolate. Is, is that too big? It depends it's like on, a double Buckeye. You know, it depends <laughs> on your tastes. How, how hungry for a Buckeye are you? So here we have basic melted semi-sweet chocolate chips. Very, very simple. Guys, you're doing a wonderful job, but I'm going to take this away from you because we actually have some pre-made Buckeyes right here that we've already taken. We've taken them out of the freezer. Thank you to my daughters, Grace and Abby, who did this ahead of time. And now these are ready for the final step. Dipping the in the final chocolate. Dipping in the chocolate. Dipping in the chocolate. All right, guys, are you ready for this? I think so. Here's some wax paper that you can set your completed Buckeyes on when you're finished. Once again, very simple. I hope we're doing this correct. Oh no, I failed <laughs> on the first one. Here we go. Yeah, I think maybe if we had a, a deeper bowl might help. Oh, look at that though. That's perfect. Mm. Wow, nicely done, Mark. So you want to then put these in the refrigerator, which is going to allow them to set again uh, so that when you're ready to eat them, they're solid. Yeah, I think if, if we had a little bit of a deeper bowl, we'd be able to get more of the chocolate around the entire Buckeye. But you're, getting, you're certainly getting the idea here. Okay, I think I need to try one of these, even though I'm not going to put it in the refrigerator. See how the handiwork went. How is it? Mmm. Very this good. Oh, there we go. Very, very good. Well, while these guys finished up with their, mmm, very good, but it's very chewy. Or you need there some milk or water. That's a Oh, well, they finish up with it. what they're doing. We want to remind you that last week we showed you a gluten, dairy, and soy free pumpkin pie recipe, including the crust, everything from scratch. Well, several of you have asked for this recipe as you are searching for tasty options for those with food allergies. And we want to let you know that the recipe, as well as our complete demonstration, can be found on demand, meaning you can watch it anytime you want at WTLW.com. And if all you want is the recipe, we can find that on WTLW.com as well. Just click on Faith and Friends, then click on the recipes link. Of course, if you have any questions, you can email us at faithandfriends at WTLW.com. Well, that was a lot Very of fun, good. Jennifer. Yeah, thank you for letting me be part of the food. I really got the full <laughs> Faith and Friends experience today. But before we go, we want to say thank you for your partnership as we continue through our annual pledge drive on our way to raising $200,000 
to be used for operating expenses in 2015. So let's take a moment and thank some of you. Mr. and Mrs. David Ernst from Ada. Mr. and Mrs. James Binkley, thank you so much for your generous donation. And Mr. and Mrs. Larry Bailey, we really appreciate your support. Can't also, be done without you. Also thankful to Mr. and Mrs. Larry Sutherland from Waynesfield. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Phillips from Lima. Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Sexualty from Columbus Grove and Mr. and Mrs. Lester Shank also from Lima. What a blessing to have such partnership from so many. Absolutely. We have a one-time gift from Carolyn in Lima, a monthly gift from the Houstons in Bluffton and also an individual gift from Conover, Ohio. And just a reminder, you can have a set up a, your bank account to give a monthly automatic deduction or you can give a one-time gift. You can do everything securely online through our website WTLW.com. Finally, we close with our scripture. It comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 9. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And on that note, we close and we want to remind you to be thankful in all things. This can be a stressful season as we move into the shopping season, but let's remember Thanksgiving is an opportunity to spend time with family, friends, and if you don't have family and friends, there are some great uh, events down at the Civic Center in Lima. There's things to be done. As we enter into the Christmas season, we want to remind you Jesus is the real reason for the season. And Buckeyes make it taste pretty well too. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thanks for joining us this week on Faith and Friends.